Okay, so you've made it to the second video, so chances are you are actually interested in doing this project, which I'm excited to do with you. So we're going to first start off, we're going to go to our project over here, I'm going to right click it, and we're going to create some folders here. First we're going to create a models folder, and then we're going to create a view models folder. And we won't really be creating a views folder because we're not going to have more than one view. It's, uh, it's a simple notepad application, so we're not really going to be changing that. So we're going to go to models first and right click, hit add, and we're going to create a class. And we're going to call this document model. And we'll create this as public. And we'll right click again, create a class format model. And we'll make this public as well. And one thing we're going to do different, if you follow my other videos, is normally I like to have um, our notify property changes in our view models. But given our circumstances and the application we're making, I find it or not really necessary, but I find it acceptable to do this within our models. It'll make more sense. But before we can really start doing that, we have to actually create, uh, if you followed my notify property change video, uh, we need to create an observable object so these models can have a base class so we don't have to duplicate code. So we're going to right click our project here, uh, our project now, not a folder, and we're going to add a class and we're going to call this observable object. Hit enter. We have our class, make it public, and we have a little fit here because I don't know how that got there. So now that we're creating our observable object, we of course need to implement the I notify property changed. We won't have this, so we will hit control period and we'll be able to enter in our using system.componentModel namespace. We'll also get an error here because we have not implemented it, so we can hit control period again and hit enter to implement the interface and now everything should be okay. Now if you followed my other videos, uh, we're going to implement this in a different way and we're going to be using a generic. And the reason we're going to be doing this is going to be self-evident once we get into our models. I'll explain that a little more. But for now, let's just implement it and explain later. So we're going to do a public void, calling it on property changed. Now, what we're first going to do is we're going to define a generic type T. So this essentially means uh, whatever uh, type property we pass through here, um, this is the type it's going to function by. So for example, we're going to pass it directly our property that we're going to be assigning a value to. So we're going to say ref t property, and then we're going to say t value. Now we're saying ref t property, we're passing it as a reference because we're going to be directly changing um, whatever field we pass through these parameters as our property and then t value which is going to be the value we're setting that property to and the reason we're doing this is because I don't want to do it all inside of our model class because it can look ugly because we're going to have quite a few properties and you'll understand that more uh, once we start doing it but the reason we're using a generic here we're using a t is because we're not always going to be using the same uh, data type sometimes we're going to be changing a string sometimes we're going to be changing a double uh, a date time, it could be uh, even the font styles we're going to be using. Um, so we don't know exactly what this is going to be when we pass it. So this is why we use a generic. So it's going to just say, well, whatever we pass here, we're going to treat it as the type that was passed. Again, more will make sense as we continue. Now we're also going to use something cool that I just recently learned. So if you want me to be honest, I'm I, I've done little uh, reading on this, but I, I believe I'm using it in the appropriate situation. I'm going to be using a attribute called caller member name. And once we do that, we're going to hit control period because we need our runtime compiler services. And then we're going to create a string called property name. Come on. Equals, and we're going to set it to just a empty string for now. 
So what is this doing? Well, this is our attribute, uh, caller member attribute. And what this is doing is essentially um, whatever member, uh, I'll try and explain it how it's uh, worded, is whatever member is calling this specific uh, method, it's going to obtain its name. So instead of using a magic string, where we would normally uh, type in ourselves the name of the property that needs to be updated. This is going to automatically grab whatever is calling this specific method and we will use that name. So we're going to move on to the logic which is our property and equals value. So here we're setting the field we send it and the value we send it. We're setting that here so we don't have to do that in our uh, models. And then we're going to do something here. Um, we're going to use a var handler. Now, in our situation, because this is not a multi-threaded application, this isn't completely necessary. Um, but I wanted, I felt this would be a good opportunity to uh, vaguely mention it. So we're going to first set it to a, a variable called handler, and we're going to check and see if this equals null. And we do this because in multi-threaded applications, it can sometimes change last second when we use our property changed method here. So it's just a way to kind of check it. It's not 100% necessary. But we're going to call a property changed, and we will pass it this, and new property changed event args, and this is where we will pass it our property name variable or parameter. And again, this property name uh, parameter is going to be uh, whichever uh, member calls this method. So again, uh, I tried to explain it the best I could. It'll be more evident now that we are moving on to our models.